There's a beauty in the breath of horses. Fall morning's breath seen in the air, the smell and sound of horses. We rode our horses from the headwaters of the Mississippi River here on our reservation, along the proposed route of a new oil pipeline which would cross our reservation. It was a third of a series of rides on pipelines. We're not protesters, we're protectors. That's who we are. Are we ready? And this we call the triple crown of pipeline rides. There's trouble on the land. Those rides took us on the Alberta Clipper proposed expansion route to the proposed Keystone XL route in the Dakotas, where riders from the White Earth Reservation joined with the Lakota to ride between Mom Lee and Dakini on the Cheyenne River Reservation. So it was that 15 riders braved some harrowing terrain, a land littered with 100,000 dead cattle from a freak September blizzard and rode the proposed Keystone Route. And then we came home to our own reservation, where a new pipeline is proposed to cut near our wild, largest wild rice lake. That pipeline would carry fracked oil from the Dakotas. Much of this comes from the homelands of the Arikara, Mandan, and Hidatsa people, also known as the Fort Berthold Reservation, which is under assault by oil companies, and where water and people are challenged not only by a pipeline, but also by a proposed refinery. The other two pipelines carry tar sands oil from the far north in the Athabascan River, a place that is beautiful and a place that deserves to live and not become a national sacrifice area. Athabascan River region is a pristine ecosystem that is until the oil companies come that way. Thus far, 3% of that oil, considered because of its extraction method to be the dirtiest oil in the world, has been ripped from the ground. The boreal forests are being turned into sand dunes. Alberta has become the third largest oil producing state, aka nation in the world. That oil is being extracted without infrastructure to move it. Hence the push for a pipeline, any pipeline. What's at stake is a lot of water and a lot of risk. In Minnesota, it's wild rice, water and oil. Enbridge Pipeline is proposing to both expand present Alberta Clipper, doubling its capacity and making it the largest tar sands pipeline in the United States. In the Dakotas, it is a land without a single pipeline across it and one large aquifer, the Oglala. The Enbridge Company also wants to construct a 610 mile pipeline from near Tioga, North Dakota to Superior, Wisconsin. That would carry fracked oil. This is also the same oil as the 800,000 gallons which devastated a Tioga farm in North Dakota early in October. Farmer Stephen Jensen walked into his field and could smell the oil. It seeped for so long that 800,000 gallons devastated his field. That pipeline was 6 inches. The proposed sand pipeline is 30. Enbridge's pipelines are largely monitored by the company. Those go through indigenous territories which are healthy lands lands that our ancestors wish to protect. We intend to do the same. The single largest pipeline oil spill in U.S. history was a Kalamazoo spill. The fact is that greed makes people act poorly. Rather than investing into efficiency, infrastructure, and renewable or safe energy, the push is to extract as quickly as possible by any means necessary and to move that oil by any means necessary. Right now, most of the oil moving in this country from the Bakken fields moves on railway. That's up to about 380,000 rail cars projected to move this year. This past summer, four square blocks of the town of Lac Magantic, Quebec, blew up as the train's braking systems failed. That train was carrying Bakken oil. Over 40 people were, quote, vaporized in an explosion which baffled Canadian authorities. They had never seen anything like it. That oil, combined with whatever chemicals are in it, 
is the stuff they want to put into the sandpaper line. The fact is, is that all of these expansions are predicated not on need, but on greed. We think that need is subjective. In Enbridge's application to the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission, access to a, quote, stable supply of oil was the primary measure of need. It turns out that the world's largest oil reserves are in the Western Hemisphere, in Venezuela, followed by Saudi Arabia, and then the Alberta tar sands. Venezuela is a country that has demanded a fair price for oil and used that oil to develop its infrastructure. Instead of paying a fair price for oil, however, oil interests are far more interested in securing oil from places that do not wish to give up their oil. Our people remain committed to protecting our land and water. This is what we are instructed to do by our ancestors, and that is our covenant with our ancestors and our Mother Earth. That is also our covenant with the generations yet to come. This is not just a native issue, an indigenous issue. It affects us all. Whether you have feet, wings, fins, or roots, we are all in this together. No corporation has a right to this land, water, and our future. This is Winona LaDuke Duke for Honor the Earth. Some things haven't changed at all. Resistance standing strong and tall. Like the red oak leaves, we remain to snap the links that formed our chain.